Hi, Jennifer. Good evening and welcome to Environmental Coffee House. Jennifer Hines and Sandy Shellis. And how's your week been? Oh, it's been hectic. Let me tell you, the fall of civilization is no picnic at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, I think that you've put together a dynamite show for tonight. Um, do you mind if I just tell people the order that the articles are going to be in? Or do you want to give Go a little intro? It. Go for it. We, we're going to play our video after, but we're going to talk so we give people some time to join. And, you know, don't take all the, don't give me all the credit, dear. <laughs> oh, well, no, this is your show. This is completely and utterly Sandy's show tonight. Born out of and severe depression. And we are taking a deep dive <laughs> yeah. into the largest Arctic mission to ever happen that's currently underway. And we're going to basically be spending a lot of the show on it. And it's called Mosaic. And it's a multidisciplinary, um, multi-scientific um, Arctic expedition. And I think you're going to find it utterly fascinating. So we're going to tell you about Mosaic. And we're this is really our Arctic show tonight. So the next thing we're going to cover is aid is on its way to an icebreaker struggling near the North Pole. So a little high drama up in the Arctic. And then... Um, another thing about the Arctic, Wall Street backs away from Arctic drilling amid Alaska political heat. So we'll take a little look at Wall Street, the stock market, and the Arctic drilling project mm -hmm. and see where that's going. Um, then we're going to cover an article called Putin Signs Arctic Master Plan. Yeah, sounds so ominous. <laughs> kind of is. Kind of is. Yeah. And, and I'm going to go over it. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, and Sandy just... is going to cover a lot of these in depth, and I will probably do surface level treatment. So, <laughs> surface but level I, treatment. I am so obsessed right now with giving these um, kind of thirty thousand foot overviews before the beginning of the show because I got some feedback that that would be a good idea, so people would know um, where we're going and how we're getting yeah. there and what we're going to be talking about. Great idea because. As we go, you know, between getting sick and getting better and not having a show or something coming up. But as we go, we get we get a little bit more polished and it's it's fun. It's the it's I love it. You know, I, mean, I do too. High echoes for not might say, hey, doomers. But you know what? <laughs> hey, you. There's a lot of people here tonight. So I'm just I'll say hello. And then we're going to do our intro video. Jennifer gave the uh, articles and. Um, I have all of those. Uh, we'll we'll do that afterwards. And so, what do you say, Jen? Should we go for the video? How many people yeah, are with us? I think that, let's roll it. Okay, it's uh, this is we're gonna play this um little video, this little intro. We decided to wait and not do it right away because everybody uh misses it. <laughs> so here we go. Um, give us a minute. Here we go. Thank you. 
Okay, so now I think everybody understands what we're going to talk about. The, uh, the Arctic, which is, I think, Jennifer and mine, one of our, I think, our most favorite topic. And I was saying yeah. to my family tonight that, before I drop that, I'm going to go. <laughs> oh, my God. We'll go. I know how you feel. Because that's really where all the change is happening. And those of us who are watching this debacle of the fall of everything that we know and we're, you know, somewhat awake and actively curious, you know, which I think probably accounts for pretty much everybody who watches this show. Otherwise, they wouldn't watch it. Right. You know, the Arctic is the most fascinating place and that is where it's all happening and for a long time field research was not really done in the arctic you know it costs a lot more yeah. yeah it costs a lot more to do field research and i was very disappointed cuz you could see things falling away you know and i thought oh is this the great dumbing down of data in the arctic are we just basically going to go into this catastrophe and not even be able to know how bad it is because some methane station has crumbled off and fallen into the arctic right. or the buoys in the north pole have like you know crumbled yeah. and gone away and we're not being replaced but that's not the case. And that's why this is such an exciting show. Don't you think so? Oh, I think so. Oh, my gosh. Everything that, first of all, just being able to, you know, look at the videos I did today. I was even looking at videos that were in different languages, in Russian and Polish and not German. I, I didn't understand it, but it was the so grass. Was I. <laughs> I was watching videos in freaking Norwegian or something. And I'm like, what are they talking about? It sounds like they really know what's going on. There's a lot of focus. That's cool. And I have to say, this is primarily a Northern European focus, right? I mean, all the videos that you saw that were yeah. in other languages, yeah. they were like in... Norwegian or Swedish or Danish or R Russian or whatever, well, but there's like other, in. you know, there's yeah. scientists from all over. Everybody's chipped in. Um, uh, I think uh, the United States, I think, gave 28 million towards this mosaic research project. Oh, that's but, good. Wait, but another 10 million came from the Department of Energy. So that's suspect. But of course, if the Department of Energy is looking, they're, they're, you know, we're going to talk about the other article about the banks not wanting to finance uh, drilling. So maybe the Department of Energy, maybe they didn't tell the president, <laughs> you know, that it's for climate change purposes and all because they, they have to know what's going on. But, you know, I wanted to do a different kind of show tonight. I didn't want to talk about everything that everybody else is talking about. You know, the, uh, I, uh, I saw a comment tonight, Jen, on a, a, mm. a show. They were calling it COVID-Con. You know how you oh, go to Comic-Con? Yeah. <laughs> COVID-Con. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my so, God. I mean, and I'm so just... sick of the coronavirus, and it's such a scary thing, and it's like this right. great you know, huge pandemic, but we're already kind of like OD'd on the coronavirus, oh, don't yeah. you think? Yeah, and everybody and their brothers talking about it, but nobody is talking about the Mosaic Research Project, and they are going to, well, I have some notes I can start with, and then we can go, I, I mean, it was like, it's like hundreds of researchers, and I'm going to use my notes. It is. And this, but the boat is, it's really the largest one, and there hasn't been anything in 25 years, I think, or longer. This, and that's really not good for climate modeling, you know? That's so, right. So um, what is it? They, they said it was going to attach to an ice flow. Okay. So this is the most fascinating thing okay. about this mosaic project. I just have to say this because it's kind say of it. zen. Yeah. And so what these these guys do, they're on this freaking icebreaker that was contributed to them by some, you know, Scandinavian military outfit or something. Isn't that right? 
and they're yeah. purposely gonna get frozen in to what yeah. remains of the poor Arctic and they're gonna go on a freaking journey and they're not gonna try and detach themselves. The purpose of this is to get frozen in place and they have just surrounded this entire ice area with all kinds of instruments. There's like 300 scientists. It's all disciplines. It's looking at salinity. It's looking at biology. It's looking at sea ice thickness. It's looking at sea ice algae. It's looking at very specific types of cod and how it relates to and how the cod follows the ice flow. And that's part of a whole ecosystem with this, oh, this ice algae and everything and they're going to take this long journey that's basically going to go in a northwesterly fashion and end up kind of like over by alaska i think isn't well, that they're, right they're right now if you look behind us that's where they are they were this morning and so um i i use this picture but that that's where they were this morning and Russia's on the other side, and Canada's on the one side. I can see Russia and... from my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another thing. Sorry. I wanted, that's okay. <laughs> another thing I wanted to say, though, University of Boulder, Colorado Boulder, is part of this project, and it's really exciting because uh, they're going to come back with a lot of stuff, and you're close by, so you're going to be privy yeah. to the, 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 the researchers' presentations when they do their, their, their poster presentations, although they're not poster presentations anymore. I'm sure they're all, you yeah. know, different, but that's going to be exciting for you, I think. Yeah, I absolutely. Think. There is so much science that's done in Boulder, Colorado. Who would think it? Tons of government um, organizations studying ice, earth, um, clouds, atmosphere. Yeah. Um, the Ice Core Library is in Lakewood, Colorado. Oh, yeah. And that has cool. like all these ice cores from all over the world. It's like a freaking library. So, a library yeah, there's a, or a lot museum. Of <laughs> no, it's not a museum. Just, yeah. It's they, these ice cores are kept at a very, very cold sub-zero temperature wow. in this massive, massive freezer. And they're intact as they were when they were drilled. And you can actually sample these ice cores and they're all aged and they're all banded. And you can go back like as a, a really, really, really long way. I mean, it's they drilled cool. some super, super deep holes and then they kept a library of it. So you can see through looking at these ice cores and the type of gases that they emit when samples of these ice cores are defrosted wow. under special conditions with chemistry and test tubes and the whole thing. And they're able to measure all of the gases, you know, the percentage of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, every gas that's in the atmosphere the, they're able the to stuff, capture it like oh, a snapshot the stuff on that ship is amazing how and and uh when we were i was watching the one video it looks like they have a you know ice fishing tents and they're out there they, yeah. and you open up and you see the big hole into drilling into in, in down in the into the arctic and the sophisticated uh uh technology that's in there with with all different kinds of cylinders and then they have a scientist that will pick up the cylinder and take it in and it's what an operation 158 million dollars i think and you know what wow. that's a drop in the bucket when you think about what michael bloomberg spent on the uh, uh election oh. ads in the united states not to have to bring Ugh. that up and ruin this thing but i mean <laughs> put it in perspective we need right. much more he could spend his money on research the arctic is is like that's the that's it's what we right well anyway i didn't want to yeah. do that no, I understand so totally. I I guess get we can it. pull up then. We'll pull up some, um, you know, the whole chat's talking. Oh, huh? Matt's an evaluator for the ABP. The ABP. Oh. Okay. Let's put up, I don't know what it is, Matt, exactly. And I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm sorry, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to put up the articles because I want to start out. We talked a little bit about that, the boat. And um, let me put, I'm going to sh screen share and put us both up with the, um, okay. So I can see what, uh, how does it look, guys? How's the screen look? Good? 
And I hope I don't sound too loud because I listen to other videos and I've had my, my mic has been all screwy. So, you know, you learn as you go, right? You learn as you Absolutely. go. Absolutely. So the first and article, the, uh, oh, go ahead, Jennifer. No, I'm not, no, please go ahead. <laughs> well, the first article, and I think you have that too on, on yours, is the, um, is the, the mission, the actual mission. So here's the mission. They talk about, they, they, they want to, um, and I think you already said this, it's, it's really, they're talking about the ice-free, you know, Arctic. Although videos we watched, it was anything but in the space that they were. I mean, there were some hellacious storms, which, by the way, outside where I live tonight, it's snowing like it looked like Arctic-like weather out here. But uh, it's breaking through, understanding the Arctic climate system, and it's and in its representation in global climate models, which this is really one of the most important things. And Jen, you know a lot more about climate models, I'm sure, than I do when you were doing your studies. But climate models are incredibly important in letting us know what's happening without modeling, which is what? Replicating and then taking all this data and, and using it to, it's not even, pre well, it's, it's not predicting. All right, I'm not a scientist. So if I, if I goof up, it's... I'll read it. The understanding of Arctic climate processes is limited by a dramatic lack of observations in the central Arctic, especially in the winter and spring. Now, during these seasons, um, the sea ice is so thick that even the best research icebreakers cannot penetrate into the Arctic. And researchers have always been locked out. So this is the biggest thing. This is big news. I mean, the New York Times had articles on this and it was, it was quite, um, it was quite something, but I put it on the back burner. And I don't know why I put it on the back burner. So we all know what the climate, that the Arctic climate is, the key to the climate. They, they want to um, give us a better understanding of the evolving Arctic system um, over the course of the year. Now, they're already months into this, so there's already things coming back. Did you find anything, Jen, that might, that was? Well, yeah, um, basically in that next article, um, Follow Mosaic About Mosaic, it's kind of interesting just to get a little drill down. Do you want me to just go through this and read this about Mosaic real quick? Or yeah. which did one? You, okay. Is it the one I have up? Um, <laughs> which one? Hard to say. It's the About Mosaic, follow.mosaic-expedition.org. So, um, this about Mosaic, um, it's the largest exploration oh, expedition to the Arctic of all time. Trapped in ice, the German research vessel, vessel um, Paula Stern, drifts for a year through the Arctic Ocean. So it's this journey of a year trapped in ice. It's just kind of so stunning. Cool. Yeah. As a result... The more than 300 participating scientists from 20 countries can gather and evaluate important measurement data for the first time throughout the year, including the Arctic winter. They expect this fundamental knowledge for the understanding of climate change mission is led by Alfred Winger Institute and the Hemholtz Center for Polar and Marine research so that's pretty amazing yeah you know i think about this all these people getting together all these countries why can't we have peace in the world we certainly have scientists that work together and they're wonderful why can't we have peace in the world why can't the oh, countries get along like the scientists there's no politics with the science well there is probably but not like what's in our life I mean, these people yeah. are from all over, and they're bringing these different icebreakers are bringing them, um, what, every couple of months, I think it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Now, I think it's really stunning, and there are some great YouTube videos that have been made by scientists mm -hmm. on this mission, and Sandy's going to post those in the show notes. Um, I watched them. I thought they were so exciting, so well done. So this is, I just think it's so interesting that finally, I mean, it's a good sign. I mean, 
not that it's going to change anything really, you know, those of us who've looked at it, we know that, but I think it's a good sign that we're looking at this and that Mm -hmm. this research expedition exists and it's so huge and they're going to examine every single part and detail of the Arctic with um, the latest science, the latest graphing materials, synthesis, major computers. I think it's really exciting. It's it's really, yeah. Are you uh, going to continue? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I guess that um, there has been another time in history where a big ship got stuck but this was not on purpose so 125 years ago Fristjorf Nansen set out on his sailing ship from Fran for the first time um, for the first drift expedition of its kind so I guess they did mean to get I guess they did mean to get stuck but an (laughs) expedition like the one planned now has Mm -hmm. never happened before. The Mosaic Project brings a modern research icebreaker loaded with scientific instruments near the North Pole for the first time in winter. In addition to Polar Stern, the other icebreakers are being used to assist in a sophisticated choreography so that there is always a supply of fuel and food at the right time. For crew exchange, supply flights, research aircraft, a runway will be set up. Well, we'll see how long that that runway lasts. We saw that in the graphic, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, In addition, a whole network of, of stations on the ice will be built around the ship. Here, several research teams set up measuring points to explore the ocean, ice, and atmosphere, as well as the Arctic life in winter. I think that's the most interesting, don't you, Sandy? Yes. I think the biology. The Arctic, yes, the biology. I, I uh, watched the video of the scientist that um, was talking about everything they were going to study in the oceans. Like you said, salinity and how uh, the differences mm-hmm. in salinity is very important, but but um, but particularly the one scientist, and I did have the video, I had it queued up, but I think I took it down to show because I have another little cute clip I'm going to show. But uh, the um, the one scientist had was talking all about all about the 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 what the life the little the life and the the yeah. chain the chain and of it, life. Oh, and it's God. so rich, and there's a whole biosphere just under the sea ice that consists of like ice algae that grows on the ice on the bottom and it's quite thick and rich and it's eaten by these cool little fish and they're just like millions and billions of them and they follow the ice flow and so it's this whole web of life that's dependent actually on the ice wow it's pretty, it's something. Well, you know, I guess we could move on to the next one because the next article is the article that is uh, called Aid is on its way to an icebreaker struggling. Now, this one was the icebreaker Captain Dranitsen. Dranitsen. Captain Dranitsen. <laughs> Said it right. Arrived at the, uh, the, uh, the Polar Stern. And, of course different uh, pronunciations of Polar Stern. This was really interesting because um, it took them longer. The weather was worse. They, in February, that it was a 129 meter long icebreaker set a world record, reaching the northernmost position ever by a diesel ugh, engine vessel in the winter. But two days later, uh, on February 28th, it reached the German Arctic Research v- uh, Vessel Polar Stern, a long-awaited encounter, encounter for the members of the Arctic Expedition Mosaic. Um, so they dropped anchor 970 meters, and they had a lot of stuff. They had to moor to the flow, and they'd begun the handover of personnel. So people were coming in, people were going, 43 tons of goods. It was it was quite so, a big a big undertaking. I saw the uh, the one uh, graphic of the the ships together. How what they how they did it, um, but there was a problem, and this they did have 
the Russian icebreaker, they experienced extreme hardships on its way north. The ship set out from Tromsmo, Norway, on February 3rd and encountered highly difficult conditions as it made it through the ice. Think about that, you know, the big icebreakers. These things are, they're enormous. Ice thickness in part of the area is as much as 160 centimeters, and several places pack ice hammocks. Uh, hummocks, hummocks have grown several meters tall. Repeatedly, well, the, the ship had to wait for improved weather and ice conditions, change course, and circumvent icy parts. On some of the days, that icebreaker managed to sail only 20 miles a day, Jennifer, a distance oh it normally managed to break through in a couple of hours. So they used a lot of a lot of more petrol, you know, they de get the, the diesel. So it, uh, that was something I don't think that they were banking on. It, uh, there was another one that happened in 2018 that got ice locked for a lot of uh, months as well. I mean, it happens, it still happens. We hear the ice is melting, but you know, it's still there. These guys are still there uh, in, in a ship drifting inside the ice <laughs> so so they have a ice airstrip and the four uh, icebreakers from um, russia sweden and china that's what i need to find out i didn't find out if china uh has gotten there yet and of course that's gonna the problem is gonna be clearing everybody that's on that ship of coronavirus make sure nobody has it well, they can't bring it to the research vessel. That would really stink. I mean, think about that. I thought yeah. about that, and, and Torstein actually did, too, in a comment that he made on a Facebook, one of the Facebook groups. Um, okay, so they're going to contribute a quantum leap in our understanding of the coupled Arctic climate system and its representation in global climate models. Lead scientist Marcus Rex said in a presentation in uh, May 19. So this is really, really, I think in the science world, this is humongous, important stuff. And people like us who are a bit of geeky, you know, that love this, um, I can't get enough of it. And I'm going to follow closely. I want to follow closely. In fact, Jen, would you yeah. mind if I played that little video? It's really oh, sweet. Yeah. And it's Please something do. that these people are doing to try to try to get um the public involved, which really would be wonderful to see more people. I mean that you know, I think the most I saw on one one of the videos was uh eleven hundred views. And it just would be so cool to get something like this out. It's it's an incredible project. I mean it's it's to me it's more incredible than space force right now there's nothing going on like this and it's important it's important it is. so but this is what it this is. is what they did for the public and how's everybody doing out there all right so this is what they did for the public i'm going to put this little video on it's really sweet it's so sweet Will sea levels rise if the North Pole's ice caps continue to melt? Warum ist es am Nordpol mal wärmer gewesen als in Deutschland? Have you seen polar bears yet on the expedition? That's all of the different, uh, but that was cute, wasn't it? I thought it was yeah. really cute. I just got to stop this. I don't want anything else to play. It was really very cute. Um, so that's their, you know, their attempt into getting people interested in what's going on. And it was cute, but I know I think I screwed up in the middle. So I hope I didn't mess it up for people that were watching <laughs> because I, I, you know, technology right technology mm -hmm. so that is a real positive that this and and in this like uh this you know such a negative world this is a real positive and i can't say enough about it 
Yeah, so, I mean, you have to have something to look forward to. You know, you have to have something to lift your spirits up. You can't just do doom and gloom all the time and just become completely jaded and sad, right. you know? Wow. And I and it's very easy to get that way. I mean, we we've all had our difficulties, including me this week. You don't know about, <laughs> but I think we could move on. Let me see what time it is. Okay, we we're doing really really good with time. <clears throat> I'd like good. to move on to this one, and and maybe you could do the Arctic drilling. You want to start with it, the Arctic drilling one with uh, yeah. the Wells Fargo because the Wall Street. Yep, yeah, Wells Fargo. It's yeah, Wall well, Street. follow the money, gang, right? Yep. That's what they always say, follow the money or follow the lack of money and then try and understand why is there lack of money where there used to be money. So this article is called Wall Street Backs Away from Arctic Drilling Amid Alaska Political Heat. And uh, it came out in Arctic today, and it came out March 3rd. Oh, look at that, just like three days old. So this is about Wells Fargo. And I'll just read you the first couple of paragraphs so you can get the idea of what's going on. Wells Fargo and Company has become the third largest U.S. bank to publicly announce it will no longer invest in Arctic drilling, oil drilling. The bank said on Monday that it does not directly fund oil and gas projects in the Arctic region and has not done so since 2018. It hinted that decision in previous statements about improving business practices, but had not mentioned Arctic drilling specifically. So um, the interesting thing is this is a trend. Um, the bank statements followed similar moves announced by J.P. Morgan and Chase and Goldman Sachs. This was all last week. Um, and the Goldman Sachs was in December and a British investment bank Barclays last January. So this is a big trend of pulling out of drilling projects in the Arctic, which is like, woo, because... You know, once the once it goes, it goes, and there's all sorts of bad things that can happen because of it. You know. Well, you know, one of the things about this is when we segue into that other article, and I'm just doing a little technical stuff. When we segue into the other article, I mean, that that they, 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 well, actually, there's quite a bit more left on this one, but they said um, mm -hmm. uh, Alaska oil production has dwindled in the last three decades. And of course, I think Alaskans get very upset about that because they are, um, they are beholden because they get mm -hmm. money from the state. Every Alaskan citizen, you know, resident gets money from the, the state, you know. And, mm -hmm. uh, but these big banks, I can't help but think to myself that some of these banksters, like their kids, <laughs> and their grandkids are saying, Pop, mm -hmm. do you, you can't put money in this. Climate mm -hmm. change is real. I don't know. Maybe that's silly, but it could be. I mean, yeah. they're, seeing the, 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 they're, they're seeing the writing on the wall. Yeah. But it's going to take a long time. But not everybody is. Just because these banks, because when I segue into the Putin article, forget about it. Yeah, That's absolutely. We'll and it's interesting. It on. says the move reflects Wall Street's increasing desire to cast itself as environmentally friendly but sparked a political firestorm in Alaska, which is what you just said. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. it did. I don't know where yeah. that was, but all right. Well, that one, yeah. So that one, that one is, uh, it's a, it's good news for now. I'd like to see that not happen. You know, I mean, I'd like to see that continue happening with divesting. Don't invest in the Arctic. But when you see, and we go in to detail on this next one, yeah. um, and you see the plans that Russia has for the North Arctic Slope, you know, we don't have control of that, and I'm sure that it's going to be uh, worse, <laughs> you know, for a lot of people. Yeah. So let me, let me, I mean, we can't, we can't control that. And it's the, their economy, you know, they're taking advantage of it because it's money. Like, that's yeah. what it all, it's all about money. So this one, this one is in the Barron's Observer. And um, 
I'll start out with this one. And, yeah. Okay, so this is very interesting. There's there's Putin. He's in some snow, president of or whatever of Russia, and uh, the strategic the, the strategic document paves the way for massive industrialization of the country's far north. Does anybody talk about this? You know, this is like all of this beautiful research, Jennifer, on that boat. All of that research is like, is like, is it for naught? So the strategy includes uh, Russia's main objectives, their priorities and tasks, as well as uh, mechanisms for implementation of state policy in the region. The Kremlin informs it was signed by President Putin on the 5th of March and came into effect the same day. So the document covers the period until year 2035, and it has been authored by the Ministry of the Far East and Arctic. It was approved by government and the National Security Council in late 2019. So according to the ministry, the new strategic plan pinpoints the country's key national priorities in the Arctic. It strengthens national sovereignty and territorial integrity, promotes peace, stability, and mutually beneficial partnerships, and highlights high life standards for the regional population. It also prepares boom, boom for yeah. ground, the ground for a major natural resource exploitation. Actually, this thing has sound effects <laughs> in the region, <laughs> and it does and help develop um, the Northern Sea Route, the ministry informs. So they go on about Arctic investments. And the same day, there's new laws and regulations, but the same day, the uh, country State Duma approved new legislation on tax releases for investors in the region. Now, they want massive development of oil, natural gas, and other na uh, resources in the Arctic. And these new laws, are going to let that happen. So we think, you know, the United States, Donald Trump, he's terrible. He wants to drill Anwar. They're all chomping at the bit, but Russia's already, you know, they're, they, it's already signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. Yeah. Um, big oil. With the new law comes a lowered 5% production tax on all new hydrocarbon projects, of which at least 50% of the licensed area stretches into offshore waters. The release covers the first 15 years of production. <laughs> so if anybody thinks that, is there really going to be um, a lessening of climate change? <laughs> mm -hmm. They're talking about 15 years of production in the Arctic. In addition comes a zero level production tax on oil projects in the East Arctic, including the new area where Roseneft and its subsidiary company, Vostok Oil, everybody's well, I hope everybody's heard of them because those are the two big ones in that country. The law intends to boost the development of new prospective industries in the region, including the petrochemical sector. So <laughs> it's going to be, well, they say pre the tax preferences will lead to as much as 15 trillion rubles of new investments in the Russian Arctic over the next 15 years. And it's all in line with the requests of President Putin, Deputy Premier Yuri uh, Trutnov, he explained during a meeting in the country's Arctic Commission in December of 2019. The president made sure, he's made clear, he wants annual shipments on the northern sea route to reach 80 million tons by 2025. <laughs> but funny, their their icebreaker had problems getting to the, uh, the Polish thing. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this is the, it's it's a tax it's a money thing but this is what's happening um in in just that arctic country you know just mm -hmm. that particular arctic country is going to drill baby drill they drill have, baby drill yeah. i can see russia from my house yeah exactly <laughs> do you remember exactly do you remember when sarah said that so many years ago that oh, was so yes, funny i remember when sarah said that so let's see what the oops i just uh how's how are you doing out there in the chat i i just think it's i just think it's so like ironic how this wonderful project with russia involved is going on in the arctic and at the same time you know preparing to drill the crap out of it 
So everybody's got an ulterior motive and it may not just be climate change. It, it, you yeah. Know, again, $10, $10 billion or yeah, $10 million, which is so. Yeah. I find it so interesting, Sandy, you know, the trend of the banks to not fund Arctic drilling, and that's like more North America, England, and places like that, right? Yeah. And then yeah. Russia's, you know, more than funding Arctic drilling, they're going hog wild, you know, all the way, you know, they're going to just eat it all up. So, you know, it's it's kind of disconcerting, right? <laughs> Completely. You know. <laughs> completely and that's as i was going through my stuff today uh, you know sitting sitting lay down going through my stuff i just it just struck me all the irony of all of it all of the it irony. is ironic because all, you've reason, got you've got the best of humanity you've got these arctic explorers you know going out living for a year on an ice flow you know doing all these experiments experiments, trying to understand. I mean, that's a very altruistic thing. I think science has a lot of, you know, purity about it. Mm -hmm. And then you've got just these nasty, dirty politics going on, and that's going to destroy the Arctic. So, you know, you've kind of got the best of humanity and the worst of humanity all rolled into one ball. Yeah. Many sure views. Do. You sure do. But uh, now, why would, you, why would you say this, Anthony? Do all scientists think they are above the law of nature? <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. What are you talking about out there? <laughs> Maybe we came in in the middle of a chat. I think so, because I'm looking to see. It. I, I, and I didn't understand that one at all. But um, <laughs> ev but anyway, you know, we we really are um, a busy chat tonight. Does anybody oh, have any questions good. about this? Because I think it's I think it's really interesting. And I hope that, you know, we can touch base on what the polar stern is doing and keep up with it. And um I personally am excited to see what the results are going to be of the different things. They, they said um, they were, in the one video, the one scientist was talking about the aerosols and particulate matter. They're, you know, they're also measuring up in the, in the sky and how the fires from Australia, they, mm -hmm. they, they saw the, the soot kind of, material so mm -hmm. all of this and somebody oh hi Adam a world without money who's funding it 20 different countries and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of different well it's basically mostly countries you know with their, yeah, their governments it it's research and probably some um, university partners there is a, uh, a a graphic I have if I can find it of the um, of the uh, all the people that are funding it. So if you oh, cool. if you want to give me a second, Jennifer, take over and let me do this. I'll, right. I'll because I know I have this picture, but I just don't know which graphic it is. And it, right. that that would really help. Um, but sure. I don't know which one it is. Well, I do have an article that um, uh -huh. I can cover. Okay. Um, this is also in Arctic Today. While you um, fix that, after cool. finding its flow, a drifting Arctic, Arctic research icebreaker settles in for the polar night. So this is after they it. got started. So this article mm -hmm. um, is also about the mosaic, and it's dated October 7th. So October this is 7th. kind of the starting, the start point of the mosaic mission. Okay. And it's kind of it's kind of suspenseful, I think. In the shadow of the North Pole, the RV Polar Stern has slowed its pace in the central Arctic, attaching itself to a drifting ice flow mm -hmm. a few kilometers in diameter. The German icebreaker, accompanied by the flagship of the Russian polar fleet is set to drift with the ice flow next year, perhaps traveling 2,500 kilometers. So the search for the ideal ice took several days and measurement of ice thickness. The chosen ice flow ranges from about a half meter thick to a few meters thick. Hmm. Several ice flows were surveyed via helicopter from both icebreaker and teams of scientists taking measurements on ice on on the ice before a decision to pick one was made, this researcher said in a blog post. 
Um, Matt Boyer, who, like Ewan, okay. who had made the pr previous uh, comment, works on research equipment that measures clouds. Isn't that into interesting, Sandy? Clouds again? Yeah, clouds they, they said clouds could be made of ice. Up there, ice clouds and all yes. kinds of different substances. Yes. It was so interesting. And aerosol particles. Yeah, that's what they're yeah. going to measure, all the crap that's in yeah. there. Everything that's right. And it affects the climate. So this is going to be like the latest and greatest science that comes out it of is. this. Um, and the ice flow will become an extension of the vessel. Everyone on board is anxious to start setting up their instrumentation on the ice and start data collection. We are also working against the clock as we are rapidly losing daylight hours. So this was back in October and the days were getting shorter and shorter right. and they had to get this thing anchored in just right. In just a few days, the sun will no longer reach above the horizon. Um, the choice for the proper ice flow was important because measurements gathered on drifting ice will be the heart of the research. So this is kind of like a year or an Arctic winter year um, day in the uh, life of an ice flow. So this is basically all about this ice flow and everything that happens on it and under it and wow. to it and everything. You know, oh, in case anybody's wondering, the acronym MOSAIC, you know, and I think mm. it's a brilliant, a brilliant That's word, right. MOSAIC, which stands for Multidisciplinary Drifting Observatory for the Study of Arctic Climate. It's the largest Arctic expedition ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. it is. Look, look, I got, uh, I couldn't find the exact thing I wanted, but I had, these are all the countries, flags, the expedition partners are Austria, Belgium, Canada, China, uh, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Great Britain, Italy, Japan, Korea, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Russia, and Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, USA, why can't we all just get along? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then um, follow us live, they have an app. But there's the Al it's the Alfred Wegener Institute, but in collaboration with another organization called Ceres. Oh, that's Colorado. Okay, that's your the University mm -hmm. of Boulder. But no, no, there was another one, but I couldn't find it. I couldn't I couldn't quite find the uh, I couldn't find what I was looking for. So I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. there's one. More. And what they're really interested in, they no. said the thin ice is what we really want to study scientifically, but we sure. also need to make sure that everyone stays safe because, as you guys know, thin ice is really difficult to walk across to set up research equipment. But they want to study the thin ice because that is what's happening. I mean, this <clears throat> last year in the Arctic was the smallest ice volume, but Curiously enough, the sea ice extent actually went up a little bit, so it kind of like flattened out, and it and it and it actually, from a satellite point of view, it looked a little bit bigger, like back as big as like 10 years ago in 2010. But that was so deceptive because the ice that is there is super super thin, and it wouldn't take hardly anything for it to dissolve. Don't wow. you think so, Sandy? Yeah, I agree. I was listening. <laughs> yeah. It seems like I wasn't because on this thing. Oh, no. But no, no, I know. I, I'm completely, I can't, I couldn't find what I wanted. But, um, yeah. you know, we're going on, what are we going on? We're going on almost an hour. And so I think I'm going to close down and we're going to, we'll, we'll do a little talking if anybody wants to have a little uh, from the audience since we are live. I don't think I need, I'm going to bring anything else up. The things will be. And uh, Mike Olinger's with us. He was talking oh, about hey, ice fog, you know, when we were talking about, um, uh, oh, and Jean, that, you know, Jean's with us from Costa Rica. Cool. And hi, Jean. Hi, Jean. Okay, so um, A World Without Money, which is Adam Soul, and he said, uh, it's, it's good we're studying it, but the cost seems to prohibit taking action. Well... <laughs> Yes, like we were saying, it's 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 expensive, but but it's really a drop in the bucket. It's not even a billion dollars. Like the billionaires 
spend. You know, I I just feel so strongly that you need to have all the information and all the data. I'm a real data person. And the first thing I used to do when I'd go into a new job or a new database or a new project or anything like that was get to know the data because the data will point and paint a picture and it will also allow you to do all kinds of projections and sophisticated model development and you just really need to have the information. If you don't have all the information, how can you possibly be knowledgeable about this subject? And I think we are obligated to be as knowledgeable as possible about this very, very sensitive ecosystem called the Arctic because it's going away and it's going to drastically affect our lives. So. I mean, I don't think it's a lot of money to spend on 300 scientists to go up so for, and especially, and especially since it's a national, um, international effort and all these different countries are contributing. I think it's incredibly valuable and we have been data poor lately and that's why it was so kind of like life affirming kind of to see that this was happening and to see that this was like this unity of effort in all these different disciplines. Absolutely. All those disciplines. That's what I was excited about. All the disciplines, all the scientists, all the different languages that they're going to, you know, talk. Some will understand English, some won't, some will understand it, it, but they all, they all can understand their science. That's a universal language. It's so exciting. I'm such a geek. It is. I mean, I feel like yeah. it would be so nice to be able to, 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 I mean, that's a dream, you know, I want to go, but so nice to see yeah. a, a, a research vessel like that. To be involved in a research project like that as I was in research and just to, to, to let's say, even administrate it or even, you know, be part of the, the, the funding mechanism, any of it. It's just so cool. It's so big. So yeah. big. And you've got the school there. I'm so I know. Jealous. I really wish one of our schools was involved. It would have been really so cool. Uh, Jean says she loves science, too. Yeah, we yeah. do. I mean, I know Jean would would love science, and she's a teacher, and she's wonderful. Jennifer, you love science from the get-go. My God. Absolutely. I have always loved science because it's such like an investigation. It's like a detective story, you know? And listen to this. We simply must have improved models so we can better understand the trajectory of the changing Arctic climate system. In the end, we'll play our hand and the Arctic will play its hand and we'll do our best to read the conditions well enough to get, to get the right play so we can be there for a full year and operate successfully. I think this is a fantastic thing. And with that, I think we've done pretty good tonight. How's everybody out there? It is uh, 9.57, and what we will do since I think, well, let's see. Um, oh, hi, Bio. I didn't see you were here. A world without money. I'll stay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think what we'll do is, for those of you who didn't see the uh, intro video, we'll do what we always do. We'll play it, and you can stay in the chat for a while. Um Jennifer, do we have any closing? Well, I mean, you know, I think we continue to look at the Arctic. I think it's the most fascinating story on Earth, you know, followed mm -hmm. by a hot second with the Antarctic. But the Arctic is what's going right now. So yeah. those of us who have taken this study on, I mean, it's the, the this is yep. it's getting good and you just can't take your eyes off it as we watch the Arctic undergo really, really big changes. And I think that's one of the reasons that they got this big project going and they got this research vessel going because the Arctic is changing now. I think I'm going to become an addict of their their channel and their videos because it's it, it's so great to see what the positive things that are going on and 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 not always get stuck in all of the negatives even though yeah. we do know that there's going to be data that's going to just be heartbreaking horrible awful I mean you know but and I'm not good there's no hopium I'm not going for hopium I'm saying well what if you know, what if? Don't know. Mm. They haven't been there in 25 years. So 
that's about what I have to say. <laughs> and uh, hey, uh, what did um, Kim say? Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. Um, what is it? Like the page. Give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, give us a sub. Why not? We like to do this on Friday nights and bring interesting, interesting uh, material that isn't covered everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. Yeah. And and I'd like to thank you, Sandy, for putting together this great show tonight and for putting together the great intro video. I think your video skills are amazing. And well, I think this I'm topic to was really interesting have any skills <laughs> to, you know you know what I need to learn things and I can learn within the parameters of my body that holds me back from things it's kind of hard to explain but thank you yeah. thank you oh thank you Jean thank you Jean says Sandy and Jennifer very well put together session it was interesting and it was fun and it wasn't depressing, even even though it could be. You know, we know what's going <laughs> on in Russia. We know that they're going full steam ahead. But I look at those other people, those inspiration and, and young people, you know, inspirational young people, young scientists, uh, just passionate about their work. And I think that's basically it for me tonight. Yeah, me too. So you guys have a great night. I'm going to get this off here and put the video, whoops. Okay, wait, I got to close this. And I'm going to put the video on and, um, and you guys have a wonderful weekend and thank you for coming. All right. All right. Peace. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs>